with this phase of the sleep, uh, what is closely associated? It is a slow wave sleep and in the slow wave sleep you have the sleep walking. So once more, what is sleep terror, sleep walking and somnambulism, all these things you have to be very sure. So typically a lot of people walk very nicely in the sleep, especially when you look at the ladies hostel while preparing for PG entrance, you will find a lot of people reading better than you. Don't think they are reading better, they are actually having that somnambulic episodes where all Harrison is getting revised and uh, you should be careful that the parapet walls are well. So somnambulism occurs during the stage 4, the slow wave sleep which is the delta sleep. There is a genetic predisposition and uh, now what is this lesion that this baby is having? So it is a strawberry hemangioma which appears within the first month of the life. It grows rapidly and in first 1 to uh, 1.5 years of life. So what is the treatment of this condition that you are actually seeing here? So strawberry hemangioma undergoes a spontaneous regression. But you can still use cryotherapy, sclerotherapy and the laser. They are all basically indicated. Now this is a case of albinism, if you didn't identify, a 5th class student will identify, as easy as that. Uh, this is a good question. So basically it is a pibaldism presenting with a congenital white uh, forelock. Now which vitamin deficiency do you have here? It is a niacin deficiency leading to pellagra and necklace uh, appearance. And uh, what is this condition? So, the rash on the dorsum is uh, a classical feature of pellagra. So, it is called the gantlet of pellagra. Now, what do you see characteristically in this hair? So, rough pointed papules of hair called a swan neck or corkscrew appearance of the hair is a classical feature which you see in the case of the vitamin C deficiency. Now what is this hyperkeratotic condition? Classically it is acanthosis nigricans. Now these spots which are found in the case of the diabetes are called the Binkley spots uh, which are multiple atrophic brownie macules found on the shins of the people is what you need to recognize. Now what is this typical skin condition? So it is the ichthyosis vulgaris which is a dry and a skin, scaly skin is what you need to remember. Now what do you see here? Air under diaphragm, which is classically pneumoperitoneum. Now in this condition you can find a typical increased um, opacity on the top border and the bottom border and that is called rugger jersey spine. Rugger jersey spine is found in those renal failure patients who have Typically, secondary hyperparathyroidism, okay, that is called renal osteodystrophy. So, whenever hyperparathyroid, why, why will uh, renal failure patients will have secondary hyperparathyroidism? Uh, we need to invest 5 minutes of our time. So, once more after this, go home, go to U Medico and review primary versus secondary versus tertiary hyperparathyroidism. How to differentiate? So typically, whenever the renal failure is there, kidneys are not working. So calcium levels will, calcium is not produced. I mean, vitamin D is not produced. Because 125 dihydroxy cholecalciferol formation because the 1 alpha hydroxylase action occur only in the kidneys. If the kidneys are abnormal, that lead to development of low vitamin D. If the vitamin D is low, that lead to development of low calcium. Low calcium stimulates our parathyroid glands. And this is called as secondary hyperparathyroidism. All this excess parathormone will come to the bone. It will dissolve the bone and extract the calcium out of it until once more calcium become 
normalized. So during this, even the vertebral bones get affected, and that lead to development of what is called as a rugger jersey spine is what you have to basically remember. Okay. Now in this, what do you have? You are having all dot 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 like appearance on the vertebral body, right? So that's called polka dot appearance. So that is a typical feature which you see in vertebral hemangioma, classically. Now what is the finding in the X-ray which is being shown to you? You have a dilated intestine. So typically it is a small bubble obstruction where you find multiple levels centrally located, small bubble which is being dilated. So once more, small bubble obstruction versus large bubble obstruction. How do you differentiate? Is the favorite question of the examiner. Okay, doc. Now, what is this image that you can see? So here you are able to see the uh, bleed, right? So it is an example of a subdural hematoma. And what is this condition where a fusiform bleed is being found? Extradural hematoma. Then what is this image where the bone is being completely broken? Osteogenesis imperfecta. Now, a young female has a bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy. They are called as potato shaped lymph nodes. Hilar lymphadenopathy. Such a large bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy is a feature of sarcoidosis. Now, what is the typical appearance of the lung in this pathology? So, it is an interstitial lung disease where bilateral symmetric uh, interstitial pneumonitis is being found. Okay, then uh, different types of uh, uh, interstitial lung disease are found: boop, UIP, etc. So you need to review that. That's also one important topic in uh, pulmonology. There's a giraffalmia, bilateral parotid enlargement, chronic dry cough, and CT is being shown. So classically, it is a case of Jogren's. Even CT not shown also it is Jogren's. How will you identify xeroftalmia, dry eyes, bilateral parotid enlargement, dry cough, that all because of the lymphocytic salivary gland destruction, which is the classical feature which is seen in Jogren's. Now what is the radiological manifestation where you are able to uh, find in this figure? So it is signet ring sign on CD, which is a classical finding which is seen in case of bronchiectasis whenever the bronchi are dilated classically you can see the signet ring appearance is what you are able to see now in this HRCT you find X shell calcification so typically where do you see silicosis is a place where you see X shell calcification now this is called as winking owl sign where the pedicle of the vertebrae is destroyed that typically happen whenever metastasis happen to the spine. So this is called the bony metastasis and the winking owl sign due to the osteolysis of the pedicle because of a metastatic cancer is what you need to remember. Now this crushing osteochondritis which you are able to see in the figure, um, what is it uh, basically called as? So Osteochondritis in various locations have various eponyms. That is another dirty table you have to master. What is Os Good Shatler? What is uh, Keenbock? Etc. Etc. So this is called Panner. Panner. Whenever the osteochondritis is involving the growth plate in the knee joint. Now in the radiological uh, lesion, you can see a um, osteoid nidus which is a classical feature of osteoid osteoma. Okay, then uh, what is this bo uh, malignant bone tumor where you are having an onion peeling kind of an appearance on the diaphysis of the long bone, having sarcoma. Now the wrist fracture which is being shown where open reduction internal fixation is a must. So where do you have? Barton's fracture, Olar's Barton fracture is an intraarticular fracture. 
If you don't repair it, it will go into arthritis. So applying splint and all that will not work. You have to operate and repair it properly. So all the Bunnett's fracture, Barton's fracture, all these fractures, you have to be uh, doubly sure to review. Now, what is this radiological appearance on HRCT? It is typically the crazy paving sign it is called as. The crazy paving, pavement kind of a sign which is a typical feature in case of acute silicosis. Now, what is this lesion that you can see in the figure? Uh, classically, it is a displaced transverse patellar fracture. So, whenever the patella is broken into two pieces and uh, the transverse fracture happened and the both are displaced. So, what is the treatment of that condition? Tension band wiring is the one which you need to basically do. So, what is this test that you are doing in this case doc? It is a uh, pen test for the median nerve injury. Whenever median nerve is injured, abductor pollicis. Abductor pollicis cannot work. You ask him to touch the pen, he cannot abduct the pollex, which is a typical feature of median nerve injury for the abductor pollicis brevis. Then in this radiograph, what you can see is a displaced fracture. So, how does it present posture hip dislocation? Internal rotation, adducted limb, shortening in slight flexion. So, flexed, internally rotated, adducted limb is the one which you see in posterior dislocation. Now, what is this patient is having? Trichiasis and uh, uh, a recurrent lesion which is being shown in the figure is subjected to histopathology, this lesion. So, what is it most likely? It is a chalagion. Recurrent chalagion should suspect sebaceous cell carcinoma, especially elderly people. What is the most common second malignancy in the people who survive with this lesion? So, it is a retinoblastoma. So, in the retinoblastoma, you can see this is the retinoblastoma. Okay. So, typically in them, uh, you find osteogenic sarcoma. It is the second most common malignancy that is found in the people who have got a retinoblastoma. And what is this ophthalmic instrument is meant for? So classically keratometry is for the corneal curvature. Then uh, what is this ophthalmoscopic appearance classically that you are seeing here? The Dale and Fuchs nodules which are a classical feature of sympathetic ophthalmitis. Then what is this maneuver classically called as? This maneuver is called Shaker's maneuver. It is mainly to strengthen the laryngeal movements of the people at the time of their swallowing, right? So, a little bit of Baba Ramdev questions also will come in uh, NEET PG exam, be very sure. Huh? So, it is called Shaker's maneuver that will strengthen the uh, laryngeal muscles. Now, what is this notch? Karach notch. Typically, is seen in the case of the otosclerosis, even a small baby will answer this. Actually, they should not mention that it is a Kerhertz notch. You should identify it by looking at 2000 Hertz frequency. Now, what type of hearing loss, pure tone audiometry pattern this is? So, basically it is uh, in press by acusis. And uh, uh, you have got a hearing loss which is most marked at higher frequencies. That is the highlight here. So, you... From lower frequency, when you go to higher frequency, there is a hearing loss. That is indicative of press by axis, is what you need to understand. Then what is this uh, typical uh, tube that you are using? It is called shepherd's grommet, which is used in order to provide the ventilation. Hmm? Now, there is a high-pitched tinnitus. Along with hearing, difficulty in hearing noisy surroundings and a typical appearance of uh, the audiogram is being shown. What is this basically? It is a noise induced hearing loss the person is having. And this is the old question we discussed. It is a Weber Ferguson incision uh, that is done along the vermilion. Now what is this? Classically it is a rhinophyma. 
Now, what is the cell which is being marked by the arrow in the picture? It is called a Heller cell. A Heller cell is also called infraorbital ethmoidal air cell or a maxillary ethmoidal cell is what you need to remember. Now, what is this condition? It is a vocal cord polyp and uh, uh, um, vocal cord polyp classically. Now, a seven year old comes, heterochromato, heterochromia, vitiligo, unilateral sensory neural hearing loss, along with a white flock of hair, which is classical of Wardenberg syndrome, one of the favorite questions. Now, what type of incision is used in tympanoplasty, which is being shown in the picture? The incision classically. So, that is basically called Lempert's. Uh, uh, oral incision is what you need to appreciate. So that brings us to the end of the image based questions and uh, once more every week you have 150 challenging questions and 150 theory questions, I mean non image based questions. You must be well equipped to face and at least your score should cross 220-230 if you are dreaming of a decent rank in need PG. You don't want to see the zeros on the side of your uh, uh, single digit numerical. You should score 220, 230. Anytime if you score 75 percent correctly, then you are on the top of the world. Okay, doc. So, good luck. Prepare. Re-energize. Don't lose the grip. Two months is too much of time, let me tell you. September, October, November. Almost 80, 90 days of time is there, but time runs very fast. That's what Albert Einstein said, theory of relativity. It looks that it is very short before exam. It looks very long in the month of April, May. It is we who react to that time. So please uh, rise and uh, make it happen. This Thursday, once more, we have a mock test and once more on Sunday. Hmm? Thank you.